write an acronym that describes one very important person. An important person is someone who is honest. Write the word honest. Honest starts with letter H. A person who is honest is a person who tells the truth, a person who can be relied on, a person who can be trusted. Secondly, Chinia, the word honest, right, efficient. Someone who is important is someone who is efficient. Someone who can deliver an assignment on time. Below the word efficient, write the word long, L-O-N-G, and below the word long, write lasting. So that the word long lasting. So we have e honest, efficient, long lasting. A battery that is long lasting, nile battery zingine zikiisha, bado itaendelea. A pen that is long lasting is a pen that you use na zingine zikiisha, it will still be writing. A person who is important is also effective. So below the word long, lasting, right, effective. Someone who produces expected results. If you are effective, you produce expected results. Then finally, below the word effective, right, necessary. Someone who is important is someone who is necessary. Not important, necessary. When you're needed, you are there. And where you are, you are usable and you are visible. What do we have? Yes. My name is Helen Mukasa. I'll give you an acronym for Mukasa another day. I'm a Tukutane Nyumaya tent. I'm a daughter of this house and I'm grateful to my spiritual parents, bishop and mom, for trusting me today without even knowing what I'll come to speak. Naeza kuja na niongevi to very irrelevant. But because I'm necessary and I'm honest, I'll deliver the assignment that God has given to me. Buana asifiwe sana. I'm a daughter of this house, I've said that. And... I belong to a ladies group, I belong to a network, I belong to ladies group number 40. I don't know if I saw Alice Minor somewhere, so I'm sure a ladies group number 40 is represented. I belong to a cell group called Mount Zion, I saw Christine somewhere, so Mount Zion is represented and any other member. I belong to a zone called Bethel Zone and my zonal pastor is here. Pastor Moses, so our zone is represented. I can see Wawire there. I have served in the School of Leaders, and I still serve when I'm called upon because I said I am necessary. I also belong to a small group called DOI Ambassadors that consists of some young girls, <laughs> mainly my age mates, yeah, Maureen is there, Rachel is there, Pastor Beatrice, Washo, Mam, Wajesus, Simone. Yeah, I also belong to that small group. I also belong to another group that meets at 10 to 11 p.m. every day. It is called, yes, Maureen is there, who, who else? I saw Kip Korir. yes, we are many. It is called 1011 Prayer Force. Not Air Force, Prayer Force. And we meet every day. And if your group stopped meeting, please, muyamushe, so that the circle is complete. But that one started 10, 11 p.m., and we still meet. Finally, I'm also an admin of several WhatsApp groups. You know, it, it, it's good to be an admin. Ukijisikia kutoa mutu unamtoa. Ukitaka kuadd mutu unamadd. 
Buana Zifia Zana. Yeah, so that's me. I'm a wife to one man. He's not here today. I'm a mother of four girls and one boy. Four plus one is five. Uh, one of them has gone to the Sunday school ministry. Uh, another one, I don't know if she's here. Niliacha struggle now singizi. Oh, Lynette. She, <laughs> she's right there at the back. Yeah, that's the baby of the house, and she's in Kenyatta University. And she's the last born. So you can guess how old I am. Amen. Yeah, I'm going to share with us on the topic do not sleep. Do not sleep, Musilale. You could be awake and you could be here and you are asleep. And we are going to see how you can be here and you are wide awake, yet you are asleep. asleep. So still in that mood of acronyms, I, I want you to write it again as an acronym. Sin willfully. If you sin willfully, just know that you have started sleeping. When unadanganya na kwako ni kawaida, unaulizo uko api, unasema I'm just around the corner and you don't say which corner you are in, I'll be there in five minutes, then you don't come or you come after one hour. If you sin willfully and you feel nothing about it, just know that you've started sleeping. Number two, L, lack of love. If you lack love for your loved ones, for humanity, for the church, for the ministry that God has placed you, if you lack love, just know that you have started sleeping slowly. E, empowered by the flesh. If you are led by the flesh, instead of Akili ku control Mwili, Mwili into in a control Akili, then just know that you have started sleeping. You are empowered by the flesh. The second E, entangled with the affairs of this world. You are so much into this world such that when it's raining on a Sunday, you cannot come to church. But when it's raining on a working day, you are the first one to wake up and go, and go to your place of work. You take the things of God for granted. You don't, you don't take the things of God seriously. But the things of the world, you are very serious about them. Just know you've started sleeping. Then a prayerless life. It is said that you are as strong as your current prayer life. Your current prayer life. If your current prayer life is not strong, then you are not strong. If your current prayer life is strong, then you are a strong person. What causes sleep? Number one is inactivity. When you're just seated somewhere and you are doing nothing and you are watching nothing, you'll just find yourself sleeping. Even if you slept the whole night and you find yourself idle. That's why ukiwa kwa traffic jam, unangalia uku, there is nothing, uku, there is nothing. You find yourself sleeping. Not that you are asleep, but it's because you are inactive and you are idle then that will cause you to sleep. Secondly, it's the atmosphere. If you are in a very comfortable atmosphere, you'll find yourself sleeping. Why do you sleep when you are in a matatu na ukiwa kwandudhi uwezi lala? Have you ever seen someone dozing off? Kwa motorbike, you can't. So when you are in a very comfortable environment, you'll find yourself sleeping. And if you are a Christian and you are comfortable, then you are sleeping. Because there is so much happening around us that need us to be awake and alert. And you can never create an atmosphere, you can never be in an atmosphere that is very peaceful if you are a Christian. Those of us who saw that clip of that bus that just went and sank in a river, will you sleep? Does it make you feel good? You just want to continue praying and praying and praying. Those of us who were there during the post-election violence and we are heading another election period, when you reflect back, you will not sleep. The environment will not be conducive for sleep. 
you will keep praying and praying. But if you find that you are comfortable, you are okay, elections zinakuja, si mungu anajua mwenye atachaguliwa. If you are that comfortable, just know that you have started sleeping. Signs of sleeping, the same, inactivity. When you are asleep, you are just there. What wataongea, if you are in church and you are physically sleeping, what wataongea, na utako umelala tu, ata ujui kama bishop amesema point ya nguvu, ukisikia watu wakipiga makofi, unamuka, unapiga, ujui ni nini imesemwa, ukisikia watu wanacheka, unauliza neighbor, amesema nini, you become inactive. Then secondly, you become insensible. That's why you'll get mutu mungwana ako kwa meeting ya kifahari. But ame doze off, ame panua mdomo, mate inatoka. That's what will happen if you are sleeping. You become insensible. And those who sleep very deeply. I had an uncle who used to sleep very deep. Such that when he's driving, na ameskia usingizi, ataeka gari kando, alale, usingizi ishe. There's one time, alikuwa, <laughs> alikuwa menda kuota jua. <laughs> then, kukanyesha. <laughs> Hakusikia. <laughs> Hakanyeshewa. Mvua ikaisha, jua ikawaka. <laughs> So when he woke up and he is wet, he does not understand what happened. He had that kind of deep sleep. As Christians, let's not sleep. We should look around, see what is happening. Don't get comfortable. If you get comfortable, you are sleeping and you are letting down the kingdom. So what happens when we sleep? And to, as to look at 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 16. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 16. Now, two women who were harlots came to the king and stood before him. And one woman said, Oh my Lord, this woman and I dwell in the same house, and I gave birth while she was in the house. Then it happened the third day after I had given birth that this woman also gave birth. So these children are three days apart. One gives birth after three days, the other one gives birth, and we were together. No one was with us in the house, except the two of us in the house. And this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. She was sleeping and she lay on her child. When you sleep, you will kill your own destiny. You will kill your own vision that God has given you. You will kill your own ministry. This lady had her own child, three days old, and because she slept, she slept on the child, and the child died. When you sleep, you will kill your dream, you'll kill your destiny, you'll kill your vision. Let's continue. So, so she arose in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your maid servant slept, and laid him in her bosom, and laid her dead child in my bosom. What happened? She has killed her own dream. She's looking for someone who is sleeping. And what does she do? An exchange happens. When you sleep, an exchange will happen. What God has given you, the devil will take, and will replace it with something that is dead. So when you sleep, you either kill your own vision or the vision that you have that is alive is taken away from you. And that is not something that is very pleasing. Be careful not to sleep, you'll kill your own or yours that is alive will be taken away from you. That's why when there's a conference here and you come out and you're so excited, Nona Sema, this time I'm joining the ushering department. But someone who has killed her own dream will come and tell you what Shikoa Jesus told us some time back. Utawezana na washo. Because that person 
has killed her own dream. Now because she has killed her dream, she wants to take yours that is still alive and give you a dead one. When you want to join the praise and worship, you are wondering, ay, na hiyo uniform utaweza? Na vile wanakujanga church mapema? And Pastor Millicent is very strict on time. Utaweza? This person has already killed her own dream. Now she's looking for yours that is alive to kill it. When you get your own dream, nurture it and don't sleep. Remain awake and remain alert. You become vulnerable and an easy target. Let's go to Judges chapter 4, verse 4 to 9. Judges chapter 4, verse 4 to 9. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel at that time. And she would sit under a palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the mountains of Ephraim, and the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. Then she sent and called for Barak, the son of Abinoam, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, Has not the Lord God of Israel commanded, Go and deploy troops at Mount Tebo. Take with you 10,000 men of the sons of Naphtali, and of the sons of Zebulun. And against you I will deploy Sisera, a commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude at the river Kishon, and I will deliver him into your hand. God is, is sending them to battle, and he's telling them, I have delivered Sisera into your hands. And Barak said to her, if you will not go with me, then I will go. But if you will, I will not, if you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. So she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey you are taking, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah rose and went with Barak to Kadesh. So they are being informed, you are going to battle, and you're going to battle this man called Sisera, but even before you go, I have given him into your hands. And they are told, you are not the one who will kill him. He will be killed by a woman. Let's go to verse 15. So she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, no, we are, verse 15, verse 15 of Judges 4. Verse 15, let's jump to verse 15. And the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and all his army with the edge of the sword before Barak. And Sisera alighted from his chariot and fled away on foot. Continue. But Barak pursued the chariots and the army as far as Harosheth, Hagoim, and all the army of Sisera fell by the edge. We'll continue. So the whole army has fallen. And when you read ahead, however, Sisera had fled. Yeah, bring that back. However, Sisera had fled away on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heba, the Kenite, for there was peace between there was peace between there was peace between Jabin king of Hazor and the house of Haba the Kenite. So this Sisera had a friend in the camp of the opposing team. Nikama Al Shabab kukua rafiki ya mutu wako presidential escort. Such that when there is trouble, this man will come and enter into state house na afichwe. So that is what was happening between Sisera and this family. Let's continue. And Jael went out to meet Sisera. Jael is now the wife of that home and said to him, turn aside my Lord, turn aside to me, do not fear. And when he had turned aside with her into the tent, she covered him with a blanket. This is a king that your people are pursuing. Uh, Ngash, Ngash, let me do a demonstration with you. Ngash. Uh, for, 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 for these purposes, you are now Sisera. And, and I am Jael. So what happens, 
is that Sisera runs and gets into the house of Jael. Jael is among the people who are running after Sisera. And what does Sisera do? He, he comes, he comes into the tent, finds this wife and tells her, what was he Nikohapa? And he asks for a blanket, assume there is, yeah, you are sleeping in my tent. Then what does he do? He asks for a blanket. Mama Mwashin is idea blanket. So Sisera Ameji feature. His entire army has been finished and he asks for a blanket. What else does he ask for? He asks for water because he's thirsty. If that verse can just be brought back there. He asks for water and instead of water, Jael gives him milk. Eh, hey, Shika Maziwa, Sisera. <laughs> so he's hidden there and he's drinking milk. And what happens? He's given a jug of milk, and he said to her, stand at the door of the tent. And if a man comes and inquires of you and says, is there a man here, you shall say, no. So this lady is conspiring with an enemy. Then what happens? And Jael, Haba's wife, took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand and went softly to him and drove the peg into his temple and it went down into the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. So what happens? Jael comes. Nahaku kuja immediately because Sisera angeskia nini? Footsteps. So she waits, and she's at the door. The instructions were, stand at the door of the tent, and when anyone asks if I'm around, if there's a man here, say no. So as she's at the door of the tent, anachungulia. And she takes her time. Now, Sisera, you are now fast asleep. <laughs> then when she realizes that he is fast asleep, she takes a tent peg. Assume this is, assume in a tent peg. Na izin na nile kubwa. Na haku jivi. Because at Askia Nini, footsteps. So she comes slowly. And because he's asleep, and I drive he on the temple of his head. So what does she do? Sisera Kumbuko Melala. Mutua Melala Achekagi. Haski Atakama Blanketi in Atolewa. Then, because he's fast asleep, Haskia Kigeuzwa. Then she takes the tent peg. Ata Haskia Kitafuta Katikatia Kichwa. And what does she do? So, what happens? Why, why did a woman kill him so easily without a struggle? <laughs> that is what happens when you sleep. Uko tu, and the devil will come and get you very, very easily. Why? Umelala akakupatia time ukalala kabisa. So when you sleep, you become so vulnerable and an easy target. What else happens when you sleep? When you sleep, things happen to you. And when you wake up, you happen to things. When you sleep, things happen to you. But when you wake up, you happen to things. Jabez, why was he called that name? He was a kid, he didn't know. But when he grew up, Akakuta, 
my name means this. So when he was being named, he was asleep. He was a child. He did not know. He could not reason for himself. But when he woke up, he now happened. When he was small, his name happened to him. But when he grew up, he happened to his name. He said, my name means pain, but I will not cause pain because my name is Jabez. My name will not happen to me. I will happen to my name. So when you sleep, things happen to you. But when you wake up, you happen to things. When you look at uh, Samson, Judges 16, verse 16. Judges 16, 16. We know the story of Samson and Delilah and how Delilah told him, do, uh, where is the source of your strength? And Samson says, if you do this, I, I will lose my strength, and he does it, and, uh, and uh, uh, Delilah, Delilah t does whatever she's been told, and Samson still remains strong. Then finally, what does she do? And it came to pass, when she pestered him daily with her words and pressed him, so that his soul was vexed to death. And he told her all his heart and said to her, no razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaven, then my strength will leave me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up once more, for he has told me all his heart. So the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hand. Then what did she do? She lulled him to sleep on her knees and called for a man and had him shave off, uh, uh, shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him, and his strength left him. Delilah made sure he was fast asleep. I wish kulikuwa na mtu hapa na dreadlocks na anaeza taka zinyolewe. We would do another demonstration. But Delilah makes sure that Samson is fast asleep. Fast asleep. Niambi, we uneza nyolewa ukiwa... When you are awake, against your will, utaskia, ata kichwe, nyole kiguzo hivi utaskia. But Delilah made sure that Samson was fast asleep. Then, akamnyoa. Then let's go to verse 27. Judges 16, 27. Judges 16, 27. Where Samuel is now in the, I mean, Samson is now in the temple. And they are mocking him and they are making fun of him. But what does he say? Now the temple was full of men and women. All the lords of the Philistines were there. About 3,000 men and women on the roof watching while Samson performed. McHugh, he was performing against his will because they had gorged out, gorged out his eyes and he was blind and they were now using him as a zombie for entertainment. Let's go on. Then Samson called the Lord saying, O oh Lord, God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once, O oh God, that I may with one blow take vengeance to the Philistines for my, for my two eyes. He has woken up now. When he was asleep, alinyolewa, things happened to him. But now, he has come back to himself. He wants to happen to things. So he holds, and Ashikilia Viking is uh, the temple, and he asks God for strength, and he dies together with the entire people that were in that place. Things happened to him when he was asleep. Then he decides now to happen to things when he woke up. So why should you wake up? Why should you wake up? If at all you are here and you are asleep, by the way, you can be very awake physically, 
and very asleep in the spirit. You can be so awake such, such that you are updating your status. Even when you are coming to church, eh, hashtag church manenos, you, everything that you do is known. Ukiwa kwa matatu ndiyo uyo wewe on my way to town. Every step of yours is known. You can be that awake, but spiritually you are asleep. So let us be awake. Why should we be awake? Number one, the harvest is plentiful. According to Matthew 9.35, the harvest is plentiful. So we have to be awake. Number two, we are at war and our enemy is wide awake. We are at war and we are sleeping and the enemy is not sleeping. I had someone who had been in the dark world and he said they used to be given an assignment every morning, every morning. When the sun rises and they are working in shifts, your duty is to, de to declare a curse on wherever the sun will shine upon. Your duty is to declare a curse upon every area that the sun will shine upon. And we, at night, when the moon is rising, kuna wale wamepewa hiyo kazi, to declare a curse on wherever the moon will shine. Nasisi wa Christo, what are we doing? What are we declaring? In the dark world, hawalali. I remember a certain pastor who was giving a testimony. He was going to, he was invited to Akesha to a place that he's not very familiar with. And when he was going, somehow Gariake ikaharibika. At a place he does not know. Na anajaribu kuitana, na anaulizo uko wapi, umwe ulizo uko wapi na hujui. Ukiangalia uku ni miti, ukiangalia uku ni miti, ukiangalia mbele ni barabara. So he says, I don't even know where I am. All I know nilikuwa ni mepita pahaliflani, and it is at night. So what happens? Anajua hiyo kesha ameikosa because he's not receiving help. He does not know where he is. Kumbe God wanted him to be there at that particular time. So somehow in the dead of the night, sometime there, anaona watu wakikuja. So he assumed ni watu wakona umbwa. And he's wondering, are these good people or, these, or are these police officers on patrol? Na wakakuja, wakakuja. Then he realizes this is not a dog. It is a black goat. So from where he's sitting, the people did not see him somehow. And they went to a distance that he could hear what they were saying. And they tied this goat to a tree. Na kasema, wewe, ha utatoka hapo. Utazunguka, uzunguke, uzunguke mpaka siku ile utakufa. And they cast that goat, mentioning somebody's name. Then they left that goat there, and they went in the dead of the night. Then this pastor, because he was awake, he was quickened to go and untie so and so. Hajui ni nani, lakini ya ile jina wa mesema. So he went, he went, when those guys had gone, he went and untied this goat and said, I untie you and I lose you to your destiny. Hauta zunguka zunguka na hauta kufa. And he released the goat. This is somebody who was awake. He would have left the car and gone on foot, atafute vile, atafika pahali. But God wanted him to be there at that particular time to see that ritual and to release whoever had been tied. The enemy is not sleeping. If at 3, 4 a.m. watu wanatembea na nambuzi, na we umengorota, then the enemy will take over. So let's be awake. If you look at the people in the Bible, Adam and Eve, kulala tu kidogo, Wakadanganywa. Noah, yani the one who saved his family and animals and other things. What does he do? He goes and drinks and get, gets drunk and he embarrasses himself. Jonah, 
He's called, go this way. Enda kisumu, ya naamua kuenda Mombasa. Just a little sleep can make you lose God's calling. So let us stick to the calling that God has given us. And let us stay alert and awake. Another reason why we should not sleep is because we are living in perilous times. Second Timothy 3 verse 1 to 5. Second Timothy 3 verse 1 to 5. Can we have it? But I know, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of God, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. So when you see such things happening, what is your reaction? Kama mkristo unasema, unajua we are living in the last days, ata biblia imesema. Or do you plead with God for mercy? When the perilous times are coming, do you relax and say, God said it, it's in the Bible, it has to happen, or do you plead with God for mercy? It's time for us to be awake when we see such things that are mentioned in 2 Timothy happening. We are also watchmen, another reason why we should not sleep. We were told that soldiers don't sleep. And you wonder what happens. Nabibile inasema, God gives his beloved sleep. Soldiers just retire to bed, but they don't sleep. So when you retire to bed, you retire to rest, but you don't sleep. You are expected to be alert in season and out of season. What should we do? We are going to read the last four scriptures uh, very fast. Second Kings 9.17. 2 Kings 9.17. 9, what we need to do because we are watchmen. Now, a watchman stood on tower in Jezreel and he saw the company of Jehu as he came and said, I see a company of men. And Joram said, get a horseman and send him to meet them and let him say, is it peace? So as a watchman, you have to watch and warn. When you see things happening, it is your duty to warn. Watch and warn. If you are sleeping, what will you watch and what will you warn? When you are awake, you will watch. And when you see any danger coming, you will be able to warn. Isaiah 62 verse 6. Isaiah 62 verse 6. I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent. So a watchman is to be alert day and night. Then Ezekiel 3.17, Ezekiel 3.17, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, hear a word from my mouth and give them warning to me. So another duty of the watchman is to pass information. You hear what the Lord is saying and you pass it down. You pass it to the others. Then finally, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1, Habakkuk 2, 1. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. So your duty is to listen and to obey what the Lord is telling you. So today, let us revisit our lives. Are you awake? or are you asleep? And I've said you can be very awake in the physical, but very asleep in the spiritual. It's time for us to wake up and not to sleep. Let me just finish where I started. When uh, I said when you sin willfully, you are starting to sleep. When you lack love, you are starting to sleep. When you are empowered by the flesh, you are starting to sleep when you are entangled with the affairs of this world, and when your life is prayerless, 
those are signs that you have started sleeping. And the enemy is very patient. He will, wake, wake, he will wait until he is sure you are fast asleep and you are a very vulnerable and easy target. Then he will come and strike. You know, when I was thinking of this, I thought of some songs that have been taken from, from the church and thrown into the political arena. There's a song that used to say, Wa Christum si la le, la le la le, wa Christum si la le, bado ma pamba no. If we sing it to church today, we will be associated with the political party. But that is where we should be to Silale, because our enemy is not asleep. The harvest is plentiful, and there is so much that we need to do. We should not wait for things to happen to us. It is us who should happen to things. May God bless you. Shall we rise up and pray? <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to give you praise, glory, and honor for this time that you've been with us. We thank you that you've ministered unto all of us, dear God, and how I pray that we shall wake up. As individuals, we shall wake up. As families, we shall wake up. As a church, we shall wake up, O oh God, that we shall not be found sleeping by the enemy, Lord, that we shall not kill our own dreams, our own destinies, that we shall not have our dreams exchanged by the enemy, my Father, but that, Lord, we shall be alert and awake at all time that we may fulfill the assignment of the kingdom that you have given unto us. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen.